I'm Joe Coleman. I'm Chris Davis. And I'm John Ballantyne. We are here on behalf of our client, the Tampa Bay Rays, to discuss the feasibility of moving the team from St. Petersburg, Florida, to a new stadium in downtown Tampa, Florida. Duffa County Field is outdated. Attendance has been declining for years, and the location is unsuitable for a professional sports team, which means the time to relocate is now. With this new location, we hope to create a better fan experience by being located closer to the local shops and restaurants of downtown Tampa, which will hopefully result in an increase in attendance. With this attendance increase and the appeal of the new facility, we hope to increase overall revenues and net income for the team. We will begin by analyzing the Tampa market, venue data, key project assumptions, economic and fiscal impacts, and financial statements for the organization. The Tampa area has proven that it is suitable for a professional sports organization. It already plays host to the Tampa Bay Lightning hockey team, which leads us to believe there is potential for the support of another major franchise. Tampa has the third highest population of any city in the state of Florida and has the highest population of all cities that make up the Tampa Bay area. The majority of citizens fall under the younger or older age category, which ranges from 22 to 64 years old. Most households are either singles or married, but with a majority being without children. Most are educated with at least a high school diploma, and a little more than 40% have gone on to receive college degrees. The median household income is around 43000 and reaches high as 200000 or as low as 16000 Although the Tampa area lacks consistency with age and income, this wide range allows for the opportunity to appeal to many different demographics to help find success in this project. Unlike Tropicana Field, the new Teco Energy Park will be located in the actual city of Tampa, Florida. Moving it further inland will be safer during any potential natural disasters that Florida is prone to being hit by. It will be situated near downtown Tampa, near the Tampa Bay Lightning's Arena, the Tampa Convention Center, and the Florida Aquarium. This location will provide already established infrastructure and parking, as well as being closer to local shopping and restaurants. The stadium will have a capacity of 35,450, which will be broken up into an upper, middle, and lower deck. Premium box seats will be located in the lower deck behind home plate, and the stadium will also feature six premium party suites that have the ability to be used as either individual suites or larger combined suite areas. As mentioned earlier, parking and infrastructure will already be established with this, in this new location. For the team. Being near a major city, there will be access to major roadways to make traveling to and from games much easier. With another major professional team already being located in this area, parking lots will already be established. City parking garages located in downtown Tampa will also be ac accessible for games. Through the revenue generated by the Florida State Tourism Tax. Finally, the organization will take out a $50 million loan to provide the last bit of necessary funds needed to build the stadium. Revenues Tickets, suites, concessions, parking, sponsorships, and Major League Baseball shared revenues will be the major revenue streams for the Tampa Bay Rays. Following the trend of new facilities, Teco Energy Park will act as a multi purpose facility which allows for the opportunity to host outside events and create additional revenue streams. Revenue and expenses growth. With the building of this new stadium, we anticipate attendance will increase at about 5% in each year following the opening of the new stadium. This will result in revenue growth for ticket sales, suites, concessions, and parking. Expenses are also expected to grow at roughly 5% each year due to increasing paywall and annual upkeep of the new facility. Economic and Fiscal Impact By moving to this new location near the heart of downtown Tampa, this new facility will have a positive impact on the surrounding areas. By having professional sports taking place year-round in this location, there will be a boost to the local shops and restaurants. It would help provide a much more complete game day experience compared to Tropicana Field, 
where fans usually would only show up for the game. By building a new stadium, the city of Tampa will see a large increase in jobs during construction. Holding outside events will also help to increase the overall GDP of Hillsborough County. Initially, there will be a slight decrease in Tampa's benefits from the Florida tourism tax as some of the money is going towards financing the stadium. An offset to this, though, is the increase in revenue for the city coming from the property tax that would be associated with the building. There would also be a significant increase in sales tax revenue that will come as a, as a result of moving the team into downtown Tampa. Our first financial statement is the balance sheet, which covers the first five years of stadium operations from 2018 to 2022. Our current assets include cash, accounts receivable, and inventory. In year one, we expect cash to be $24,197,313 and grow each of the following years. We also project both accounts receivable and inventory will grow at around 5% each of the following years after year one. Long-term assets are consistent over the course of five years because they represent the land and new stadium itself, as well as the equipment that was used to build the stadium. We also show accumulated depreciation, which can be found in more detail on our depreciation schedule. In our liability section, we have accounts payable starting at $4,200,000, and we expect that to grow at around 5% each year. We also have our current installment of our long-term debt, which comes from our loan amortization schedule and reflects our short-term debt for the for the current year from the loan we took out. Following current liabilities is our long-term debt which shows the current year's ending balance for paying back the $50 million loan we took out for stadium financing. In the owner's equity section, you can see both the total capital the team has gathered to finance the facility and the retained earnings which reflect our net income that we will go over in more detail with the income statement. Finally, as you can see, both our total assets and total liabilities and owner's equity sections balance out at every year's end. Our next portion of financials is our income statement for year's end 2018 to 2022. The main revenue source for the team comes from ticket revenue, followed by concessions and any earnings received from Major League Baseball's shared revenue pool. As you can see, there are also other smaller but just as important revenue sources like suites, naming rights, parking, sponsorships, and any revenues generated by outside events. All of these together provide total revenue of $112,228,750 for year one. Total revenues also slowly increase each of the following years. The majority of total expenses come directly from player and staff salaries, with the next largest being the depreciation expense. Other expenses that have to be taken into consideration are the general and administrative expenses as well as the expected maintenance and utilities that come with building a new facility. After factoring in both the interest and income expense as well, our total expense for year one is $107,320,000. By taking the difference between our total revenues and total expenses, you're able to see that we had a net income of $4,908,750 for year one. It is also worth noting that there was a net gain for each of the first five years, but as salaries and other expenses continue to grow, the net income at year's end slowly decrease. Our next form is our statement of cash flows for the years 2018 to 2022. With this form, we are able to detail where our cash is coming from for each year. Under the operating section, you can see that we took our year one net income and added back depreciation and then accounted for the initial cash decrease from gaining inventory and accounts receivable, as well as the initial cash gain from good debt that we have taken on. In the following years, after year one, we show the difference in our cash amount rather than the total to more accurately reflect the change in our cash. For our investing section in year one, we include the cost of the equipment, land, and stadium itself, and include them as decreases in cash because of their initial purchases. In the following years, these are recorded as zeros because no additional land, buildings, or equipment is purchased or sold. Finally, in the financing section, we show the cash that we received from our first payment for the $50 million loan we received, as well as our initial capital investment. Our long-term debt decreases cash each year as we continue to pay off our debts, and capital is recorded as a zero for no additional capital gained. After adding up the totals of the operating, investing, and financing sections, we have a total of $24,197,313 for year one cash. 
We have also included a copy of our depreciation schedule for both the building and equipment. Both asset, assets depreciate at a straight line rate with the equipment depreciating over 5 years and building depreciating over 30 years. You can also see our total depreciation for each year as well as accumulated depreciation for each year. After careful consideration of the Tampa market, the demographics, venue data, and financial statements, we have concluded that this project is not feasible for the Tampa Bay Rays at this time. There are many benefits to this potential stadium and the new location, but they aren't strong enough points to overcome some major red flags we have found. The demographics show that there is a lack of consistency among who the consumers are in the Tampa area. With a wide range of ages and average household income, it is very tough to predict whether fans will support the team and be drawn to their new stadium. Even if they had an initial attendance increase, it would most likely still be well below league average. A major, a major red flag we found came from the financial statements, specifically the income statement. Over the course of the first five years, the team had positive net income, but each year it decreased as a result of increasing expenses. Assuming expenses continue to grow at this rate, the team could very easily find themselves at a net loss rather than a net gain. The Rays are in need of a new stadium. Until they are able to find more success on the field and create a more consistent fan base to have higher revenues to combat their increasing expenses, it makes most sense for the team to stay at their current location for the near future. I'm Joe Coleman. I'm Chris Davis. And I'm John Ballantyne. We want to thank you on behalf of our client, the Tampa Bay Rays, for taking the time to hear our proposal for the new Teco Energy Park.